Democrats face divide over a strike on Syria, ABC News. Now. Lamar Adam Rehab. Kate Winslet. Toy Copter Death. Tony Abbott. Pillsbury Recall. Robin Fike. Good Morning America. World News. Nightline. 20 over 20. This week. Sign in. Home. Video. U.S. World. Politics. Entertainment. Tech. Health. Lifestyle. Money. Shows. Gma. World News. Nightline. 20 over 20. This week. More. Investigative. Money. Good News. Photos. ABC News Vertical Bracket Univision. Live. Weather preferences. Cancel. Set. Home. Video. U.S. World. Politics. Entertainment. Tech. Health. Lifestyle. Money. More. Investigative. Good news. Photos. ABC News Vertical Bracket Univision. Live. Home is greater than politics. Democrats face divide over a strike on Syria. Washington, September 7, 2013, AP. By Ken Thomas Associated Press. President Barack Obama's pursuit of a military strike in Syria has put congressional Democrats and party leaders around the country in a tough spot. They face loud opposition from more weary constituents at home and are wary of being pulled into another foreign conflict. But they also are confronted with grim images from Syria of gassed children and the pleas of a president from their own political party to consider the consequences of an action. Breaking from Democrats' long history of being the party typically opposed to military conflict, Obama is pushing for a limited military strike in Syria in response to President Bashar Assad's alleged use of chemical weapons. House Democratic Leader Nancy Pelosi and Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid have rallied behind him. But some liberal and moderate Democrats, the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan fresh in their minds, have begun joining dozens of conservative Republicans registering their opposition. And many rank-and-file Democrats are undecided in whether to support a congressional resolution for military action, questioning whether it would turn the tide in a bloody civil war, whether it's in the U.S. national interest, and whether it would prompt Assad to retaliate with more chemical weapons. We've been to this dance before and we saw what happened in Iraq, said Representative Bruce Brawley, Tiala, who says he is leaning against supporting the resolution. And I have a solemn responsibility to understand what the risks are, before I vote to authorize the use of force. What's the risk to the U.S. and the president standing in the world, if the Congress votes against the resolution? Emerging from a closed-door briefing on Thursday, Rep. Tulsi Gabbard, D.Y.E., an Iraq war veteran, said she wanted answers about what would happen after the U.S. attack but her own military experience was giving her great pause before making a decision. Rep. Alan Grayson, E. Flat was resolute in his opposition. It's simply not our responsibility, he said, wearing a tie covered with 1960s peace symbols. In the Senate, Democrats Chris Murphy of Connecticut and Tom Udall of New Mexico opposed the resolution to authorize a strike when it was up for a committee vote, while recently elected Massachusetts Senator Ed Markey, who succeeded Secretary of State John Kerry, voted present. West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin, one of the party's most moderate members, said he would oppose the resolution. More than a dozen Democratic senators are supporting it. Obama captured the Democratic nomination in 2008 in part because of his opposition to the Iraq War, a position that he used effectively against primary opponent Hillary Rodham Clinton, who as Senator voted in October 2002 to authorize the war but then stumbled among anti-war Democratic voters. Many Democrats in the House first won their seats in the elections of 2006 and 2008, when the party was fueled by voters who blamed President George W. Bush for the enduring conflicts. It is difficult for many of those Democrats to authorize U.S. intervention in a new conflict a euro even as Obama and Kerry assure them that it will